Hello, welcome back to Bebot Review. I want to talk about the tetrachords in this lesson. So what it is is, before I just do that, I just want to go over basic music theory. You might have seen people on YouTube saying this about harmonics. If you get a string and then you pluck it, the string vibrates quite a lot. It vibrates firstly this way, what's called the fundamental. So. If I plucked that and it was that note, C, right, that's what you would be hearing on the long note. But it also vibrates like this. So we've got a second note, and that would also be a C, but it would be one octave up. And then it also vibrates, let's mark this off so I can get it better, like this. See? So it's, it's vibrating again, and then you'll get a G. And then if you vibrate it, it vibrates four times, you get that C again. Then fifth times, you get that E. And then six, you get that G and B flat. Now this, all this, what I'm just showing you now, came about by a guy called Pythagoras. He was playing around with a, a monochord, and he was plucking strings, and he was uh, watching the vibrations or whatever, you know. And he actually came out with all these. I don't, I don't know how far up he went, but the thing is, this uh, more and more, this this is going higher and higher and they're virtually going forever. As these notes go up, they also get fainter, so you're not hearing them as much. So the first, the most important, as far as we're concerned, is the first six harmonics that you hear. Now, all musical instruments, which you probably already know this, but all musical instruments sound different like a saxophone sounds different to a trumpet to a piano to a guitar because of the volume of these harmonics right on a on a say a clarinet a clarinet plays quite a strong a strong fundamental but then the next note that's played loud is that one the third harmonic the second one is very quiet and then that one's quiet, and then that one's loud, and that's quiet, and that one's loud. It's very strange. A clarinet plays like that because it has a conical bow. Right, I should move that about. It has a conical bow like that. Right, so you get alternated harmonics playing. Now, a saxophone, you, you'll see, is a, has got a bow like that. It's conical. And because of that, a saxophone plays loud on all these, right? But there's other, there's other aspects as well which you should know about. Because Charlie Parker, right, he sounds different to the saxophone players at that time, apart from the other beboppers like Sonny Stitt and that. Uh, but he broke away from the sound of kind of like the soft sound of Johnny Hodges. Johnny Hodges' sound was to f concentrate on these lower harmonics. With Charlie Parker, these are much louder, so you get more edged at sound. So, in a way, if you think that Charlie Parker's the king of bebop, then and you want to produce bebop, you really want that kind of edgy sound, which is perfect for bebop. That's why I don't understand these jazz guitar players. They, they put these really heavy strings on the guitars, and they get a very woolly sound, a very deep sound. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't sound all right, but it's not really kind of like what you want bebop sounding. Bebop is more edgy. So you want that sound what electric guitar players play, you know, the big rock guitarists, they'll play that very airy sound, that that higher sound, that's more kind of stuff you want to be, it wants to be a developed sound. If I were playing guitar, that's the kind of sound I would want to try and get, the, what the rock guitarists get, but play bebop, you know, not rock. <laughs> so I thought I'd just tell you that, it's just my opinion, you can ignore it if you want. But what I'm saying is that this came about through Pythagoras, all this experimenting with waves. Now before that, which we want to, which we're talking about with tetrachords is, what they did is they were just playing notes and they found out that, you know, if you play that note, right, which gives that sound, you know, C, and then you get another sound, you know, it would pl keep plucking, oh, we get another sound, if you keep plucking, you know, tightening the string up, we get this other sound that's an octave higher. They didn't, they didn't actually see it as that, they were just like tightening the string up, I suppose, on a, on a string instrument. Uh, and what they liked is, they liked the sound of a perfect fifth, which we call that today, C to G or D to, F short, uh, D to A or, or whatever, you know, A to E. They liked that sound, so what they did is this. They went, they played a C, then they played the G, then they thought, well, what if we play 
a perfect fifth up from that, we get oh another note D. That sounds all right as well, doesn't it? Then if we go up there, we get another one. What if we play another perfect fifth? What if we play another perfect fifth? That's all right, isn't it? Go down a perfect fifth, fifth. <laughs> or whatever. So that's what the Greeks had. They wrote it down as a scale. They wrote it down as a scale. Right. Now they didn't see the early Greeks didn't see all these lines going up, you know, like like Pythagoras did, you know, harmonics. What they did, they just like them perfect fifths and they made this kind of scale. But they were playing them like that, not as we play a C major scale today, they played it like that, and that was called a tetrachord. And then they played it like that to B, like from there to there, and that didn't exist. They just saw seven note scales, right? So that was also a tetrachord. And that was basically it in Greece. <laughs> they just they're just playing tetrachords chords like that. Ah, I don't I don't, I don't know if it's exactly that that. I don't think it was a C major scale because the first notes that they were playing about we was start there what we call their first note I believe was A, you know. So it was more like a <coughs> A major scale. But that was it. It was just that one scale. They weren't and they they were playing things on that. Now we we've been like developing tetrachords as we go on as we know more and more. All right? And this is how we see a tetrachord today. I'm just give, I just give you that as like a little bit of background information. A, B, C. See, we include that and that, and that's the eighth note in our scales. I know you, you, a lot of you are saying, oh, there's only seven notes of scale, but really that's how we do it from C to C. And you'll see why in a second. All right. So we have today, let's make sure this is okay for you to see. So today we have a tetrachord that's there, right? And then we have another tetrachord here, right? Now this tetrachord, as you can see, it starts off, this, and people on YouTube have been showing you this. You get a whole tone, a whole tone, and then half a tone, and then a whole tone, a whole tone, and a half a tone, right? And then there's a gap here. Now this gap is called a link, right? And that's how you get a major scale. Now uh, let's before we do what else, let's just have a concentrate on tetrachords themselves. I'm doing. I'm hoping. I'm not actually writing this as music. I'm actually writing it as letters because I think it'll probably be easier for you to see as letters. But you don't mean to say I can't write it all out in music. I'm just doing this to make it as simple as possible. I think this will be the easiest way to do it by writing letters. Right, so let's concentrate on tetrachords in our musical s system. So we have C, D, E, F, right? So that's a tetrachord, okay? And people have been telling you that you get a whole, a whole, and a half tone, right, between them. So it's between C and D is a whole tone, between D and E is a whole tone, between E and F is, a, is an whole tone, okay? So this is what we've got, right? So what I want to do is, for start, I mean this is what people on YouTube have been showing you, but what I want to do is change this. A whole tone, uh, a whole tone, the, the distance between C and D, I don't want you to call it a whole tone, I want you to call it two, two half tones. And the distance between D and E, I also want you to call it two half tones. And the distance between E and F, I want you to call it one. Now that's called a two, two, one pattern, right? It's the gap between this C and D, the gap between the D and E, and the gap between E and F. Now you see you've only got three letters, but you've got four notes. So if you say two, two, one, starting at the bass, it's up two half tones to a note, then up again two half tones to another note, and then up one note to a one. Now that that pattern, two, two, one, this pattern is called a major tri triad, major tetrachord sorry tetrachord that's called a major tetrachord right a, a pattern what goes two two one okay I, I hope we've wrote this down because you need to memorize these okay so there's obviously different types of te tetrachords isn't there in our musical 
language. So if we just alter that, right? I don't know. To, yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll just go over this and just show you because it'll help you when you understand modes in a sec. If I take, I'll just let me just move that out of the way, so it's still in focus. If I take a C major scale, C D E F G A B C, right? And I build chords up from this scale. So you've got C E G, so that's C a C chord. D F A, right? That's D minor. E G A, -A B, so that's E minor. F A C is F major. G B D is F ma uh, G major. A C E is A minor. And B D F is B diminished, isn't it? Right, if I if I look at these, let's put it like that so you can see better. That's becoming a bit of a mess now, isn't it? <laughs> if I look at these chords, right, you can see that there's a relationship between this chord, that's major, the F, that's a major, and the G, they're all major chords, aren't they? So if you're doing tetrachords, right, there's got to be a relationship between those chords, the C, F and G, and this kind of major tetrachord, this 2 2 1 pattern. And that's exactly what happens. And I'll just show you by putting it into scale form. Okay? So this is a this is a a major scale or what the what the Greeks called an Ionian mode. C D E F G A B C. Right, you've got two two one pattern there. You've got this link. A link is two, right? A link is always two. See this pattern here is is a major tetrachord. I'll just put it like that. And then you've got a link of two, right? Then you've got another two two one pattern, which is also a major tetrachord. Okay, I hope you're getting this. It's pretty easy actually. So you've got a 2 2 1, right? A link that's two, right? Two half tones that is, and then another one, 2 2 1. So to construct a major scale, it's 2 2 1 link, 2 2 1. So 2 2 1, 2, 2 2 1, isn't it? So it's quite easy. Now I said that's that would be, I said that there were also there was C major, F major, and G. Right, they all they all form chords on the C major chords. So if I built a chord up from this F, I would get F major. If I built a chord up from this G, I would get G major. So there's a relationship between these tetrachords and this link system, and that's exactly what you get. So that is a major scale or an Ionian mode, right? So I hope you hope you wrote all that down, because now I'll show you a Lydian scale, a Lydian scale. People on YouTube have been coming out with this Lydian tetrachord, which I've never even heard on. So, a Lydian scale. I'll, I'll do it from... Uh, hold on, just a sec. Let me think. So, on a Lydian, mo a Lydian mode, which I'll just write down. C, D, E, F, sharp, G, A, B, C. Obviously, that's a Lydian mode. Just D, E, F, G, A, B, C. In a in a major scale, when you do a major scale, the Lydian mode is F D E F to F, isn't it? We call that a Lydian mode. And it's got this tritone here between the first and the fourth. Now, some people on YouTube are saying that that is a tri is a tetrachord, which is the Greeks would never go off with that. And then I I I saw one guy who'd actually put that on YouTube, and I actually says to him, I goes. I goes, you know, I've never seen a, tri a, a tetrachord with a tritone. He goes, oh, it's just a four-note four note chord. Just confusing if you ask me. I'll show you. This is how, a, how you construct a Lydian, a Lydian mode, right? It's basically the same thing. But this time, you know, when I show you major scale, there's a link in the middle. This time you put the link here. So this is the link, which is two, right? Then you've got this two-two-one pattern, which is a major tetrachord and then another 2-2-1 pattern right which is a major tetrachord so 
So you've got two, you've got this link, which is two, and then you've got two, two major tetrachords, aren't you? So this, the, the actual formula for a Lydian scale is two, 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 one, two, two, one. Okay, simple, isn't it? So you can, you should be able to remember that, and you know, work tetrachords out all over the place, right? So I also said. Right, I said there was a relationship between those because if you make chords up on these scales, you get C, which is major, F major, and G is also major. So therefore, there's also got to be a relationship not only with the Lydian, the F, but the G. So we'll write that down. So the scale from G to G, from there to there. Let's just move that. F, G. The scale from there to there is called Mixed Religion, or le it was originally called Lesbian by the Greeks. Uh, and it, it was changed by the church because Lesbian was a, an island, uh, Lesbos, uh, a Greek island which was controlled by women. It had, a woman's, women. it had a queen who was a woman, and the church didn't want the women to be seen as high, so they changed the name from Lesbian to Mixed Religion, right? the early church. So I'll just write it down from C, which is C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C. That's a Mixolydian chord from C. And if you look here, we get the 2, 2, 1 pattern, right, which is a major tetrachord. I hope you're writing all this down, because you will be tested. Uh, and then you get another 2, 2, 1 pattern there, between F, G there, and that's another major tetrachord. And then here we have the link, right, which is 2. So the link's 2. So if you, see, if you remember, a major scale was basically a 2, 2, 1, link, 2, 2, 1. Um, Lydian scale was link, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 1. And a mixed Lydian is 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 1, link. So the link has just changed. So let me just, let me just write that down. I hope you've wrote that down. <clears throat> so, a major scale is a major tetrachord, right, link, major tetrachord, right, which is 2, 2, 1, link, 2, 2, 1, right. A Lydian, that's major, a Lydian is a link, and then a major tetrachord, and then another major tetrachord. So it's two, 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 one, two, two, one. Okay, and then a mixolydian is a major tetrachord, another major tetrachord, and then the link is at this side. So it's two, two, one, two, two, one, two. Okay, simple in it. Right, that's, that's, so that covers major tetrachords, right? 